What's up guys, Chicks there from Chicks Tech Reviews. So the Blitzwolf BW VP9 is in the house people and I know some of you guys have been waiting for this one so here it finally is. Now this one's gonna be a real cracker of a projector. It's a full size LED video projector which supports full HD native resolution and you're getting full Android TV OS version nine built in along with Google Chromecast, voice control, HDMI input so you can hook up your favorite game console or TV box and enjoy all this action on a massive 200 inch projection directly on your wall. So without any further ado, let's just get it out of the box, shall we? So inside the box, you will find a user manual, an HDMI cable, a 3.5 millimeter to RCA for your old school connections. So you can hook up a PlayStation 2, Nintendo Wii, a VCR, or even an old camcorder. We have a power cable, a remote control, and this does look a lot like a TV box remote control. And this remote also supports voice control and it's powered by two AAA batteries. And of course the projector itself. Now let's quickly go through the specs. This is an LED video projector. Energy efficiency is 140 watts. You have a full Android system built in. That's Android TV OS version nine. So you've basically got a full Android TV box built into the projector. So it's running on a quad core A55 chip and you have the Mali G31 for graphics. This has two gigs of DDR3 RAM and 16 gigs of internal storage. You have dual band Wi-Fi and Bluetooth version four. Now you can expect a lamp life of 40,000 hours. Brightness is 6,500 lumens. You have a native resolution of 1920 by 1080. This supports digital keystone correction. Contrast ratio is 2000 to one and maximum optimal screen size is 200 inches. And you do have built in speakers. That's two times five volts and it supports Dolby DTS AC3 audio. All right, so closer look at the projector itself. So projector is made completely from plastic. It is a full size projector, as you can see. You've got this really nice mesh coating on top. It feels nice to the touch. It looks really good as well. You've got this bronze finish on the front with the Blitzwolf logo, and you've got your lens cap. And if I remove it, you can see the lens. The lens cap is actually made from this rubbery silicon material, and your focus adjustment is built into the front of the lens. So you can just twist to obtain the best picture possible. On the top of the projector, we have some navigational controls, but you can do all of that on the remote control as well. So on the side of the projector, we've got a speaker grill. On the back of the projector, we have a power socket, a physical power button, two USB ports, and you can run your multimedia directly off USB. You've got a three and a half inch AV and a three and a half inch headphone jack. You've got two HDMI inputs. So you'll be able to hook up your favorite game console, TV box, Android tablet, Android smartphones, and you'll be able to enjoy any of those on a massive 200 inch display. Now this projector is running Android. You've got built in Wi-Fi, but the option for ethernet is also there. And I believe that's a gigabit LAN. And you can see a few details there, 1080p full HD smart LED video projector. Android logo is there. And I can't wait to test the Android on this. Now on this side, you've got a speaker grill and you've got a grill for the fan. And that brings us back to the front of the projector. And this is what the bottom of the projector looks like. At the bottom of the projector, you will see a button. If you press it, it will give you a kickstand for some elevation should you need it. Now you do have a universal mount. Just unscrew the rubber feet and it will expose four of these tripod threads and that will allow you to ceiling mount this to a universal ceiling mount. So without any further ado, I am gonna get this all connected up and we are gonna give it a full test and find out exactly how good this projector really is. I'll be right back. So we are roughly three meters away from the wall in front of us and we are projecting directly on a cream wall and you're looking at roughly a hundred inches. The first thing I like to do is test out that fan noise. So if I move back about a meter. So it looks like from a one meter distance, you can expect around 44 decibels of fan noise. So yeah, the fan noise is uh, pretty loud. You can hear the fan noise. Now, one of the major advantages of this projector is having Android TV OS built in. So as you can see, this is Android TV OS. And if I just go to settings, quickly go to about, you can see that it's Android TV OS version nine Pi. Okay, so you've got something called mouse mode, which you can enter and exit by keeping the OK button pressed for a few seconds. To show you what that looks like. So I'm keeping it pressed. Here we go. One, two, three. 
and then you can see a mouse on the screen. And to exit the mouse mode, so the mouse disappears, keep OK pressed for three seconds and there you go, mouse is gone. So over here you can see your video, audio and display options. Starting with aspect ratio, you can switch between 4x3 and 16x9. I like to leave it on auto. You've got keystone correction, so vertical and horizontal. You can adjust that keystone if you need to. This is the maximum projection size from a 3 meter distance. If I press down, I can zoom to the minimum or I can go straight back up to the 100 inches. If you've got a limited sized wall and you don't have enough space, the option to zoom in and out definitely helps. Now projection mode, and here you have all your projection modes and also a very useful illustration at the bottom showing you how each mode can be used. Date time storage, I'll quickly show you the storage information. You have 16 gigs of internal storage from which there are 12 gigs free to use. Now at this stage, there is something that I do need to mention. I've never actually come across Android TV OS without the Chromecast feature. Um, that feature is usually built into the OS, so this could be some custom hybrid Android TV OS, but it certainly doesn't look like the official version. Now let's have a quick look at all the included apps. So this is everything you get as standard. There is YouTube, Amazon Prime Video, you've got Netflix. You've got some sort of screen mirroring option there, which I am going to test in a minute. And you have the Google Play Store. And we're going to open the Play Store to make sure which version it is. It should be the Android TV version. And as you can see, it is the Android TV version of the Play Store. And let's test out that screen mirroring. So it says use your Apple device to use AirPlay server. So here's my iPhone 12 Pro Max. I'm using the screen mirror option and it's come up eShare 7262. I'm going to tap on that. And that should basically mirror my iPhone display. And yeah, it's worked. It seems to work fine with minimal lag. Have a look. I just wanna quickly show you guys what more apps is. So when you tap on more apps, it gives you this kind of minimalistic app store where you can immediately download all the most popular apps. Okay, so let's see what this projector can do. Let's begin with some YouTube trailers. And I am gonna test out the voice function. Movie trailers. Now voice search does work, but you need to ensure you keep the button pressed on the remote whilst you're talking. Okay, so let's go ahead and play some trailers. So just pausing it on this scene. And you can see that there is no distortion, no pixelation up close. The projection quality looks great. But I've noticed at this stage that the colors are slightly washed out. I haven't seen any option to enhance that color. So the color could be a lot better. The lizard is usually a lot greener, uh, slightly brighter. So this is what you can expect. Now I just wanna quickly switch on the light and show you what daytime projection would look like. You can still see the projection, but the quality has gone right down. Probably wouldn't recommend this projector for daytime use. But if I switch off the light, you can see that's a lot better. Now, of course, this is a 1080p native projector but the built-in Android TV OS gives you the option to stream up to 4K. I am gonna try that out, no idea if it's gonna work. Let's see what happens. And while we're here, we may as well just test out Netflix. So it looks like I'm navigating Netflix absolutely fine with the remote control. So no external mouse needed at this stage. And the maximum resolution supported in Netflix is surprisingly only 480p max. And here we have Amazon Prime Video. These triangulation pieces in because they'll transfer the loads into compression, which is better. And it'll also help hold the whole... And you can stream a maximum of 480p on Amazon Prime Video. 
So that should give you an idea of what the internal Android TV OS is like. Now let's switch over to the HDMI port and play some PlayStation 4 games. Now to switch from HDMI, you can't just press a button on the remote control. You actually have to go to settings and then click on source. And then it will show you your active HDMI connections. So if I select HDMI 2 and the PlayStation 4 has loaded up. So we're going to play some games and let's begin with a bit of UFC 3. Here we go. The defense have two choices deal with the man or, or deal with the space. It's so and it's a goal! And it's poorly executed. Firmino is lifting it over. Oh, surely! Can he fight the finish? Yes, he can! Stop to that. Shoots! Is there any support? He might not need it. Mohamed Salah. It's Salah! Goal! Results no longer in doubt. It's just about how many. So we have a very interesting scenario. Now when we ran YouTube directly from the internal Android TV system, the colors seemed a bit washed out. Um, it wasn't quite there and this time i played youtube from the ps4's system menus and you can see that the colors and the contrast everything is spot on the picture quality is much better the colors look a lot more vibrant and punchy i'm also going to switch the light on so yeah whilst you can still see everything on the screen clearly but it's still not as bright as i would have liked it to be for daytime use but when you use it in the dark I can't fault it. So the internal Android system won't give you the best looking colors, but if you attach your own device, be it a game console or some sort of Android TV box, then you can experience the full quality and colors very nicely. And here's a quick side by side with the internal Android versus the PlayStation 4 media capabilities. Now, usually in these type of projectors, you have some sort of settings menu where you can adjust the color. And unfortunately, this projector doesn't have any system menus or settings where you can adjust the colors and the contrast, etc. So what you see is what you get. You can't customize things after that. So there you have it, guys. That was the Blitzwolf BWVP9. So I've got mixed feelings about this one. 
On one hand, it comes with built-in Android TV OS with 16 gigs of internal storage so you can download your favorite apps or games or sideload them and watch them on the big screen. So lots of benefits of having Android TV OS built into the projector, but at the same time, why did they leave out something so important like picture settings? Now this projector does not have any controls or settings to tweak the picture quality. At least I could not find this setting anywhere and I looked for ages. And usually all projectors have some sort of picture tweaking setting. Now the default picture quality lacks color when streaming specifically from YouTube and Amazon Prime. Although it didn't look that bad when I streamed on the internal Netflix, but Netflix and Prime were limited to 480p. So for me personally, without any picture settings, the built-in Android becomes not very useful as I really do need color vibrance when I'm watching movies or playing games. Another drawback is the loud fan noise. From a one meter distance, it's 44 decibels of fan power and up close, it's even more. So the fan noise is definitely not pleasant. Now on a positive side, if you ignore that this has Android and just connect your HDMI device, be it a TV box or a game console like the PS4, and then you will notice that the color issue disappears. You still cannot tweak that picture setting, but the overall projection quality looks much, much better. You're getting real full HD resolution, super vibrant colors, and a great overall experience for both movies and games. Now when playing games, as you saw, there was no lag, there was no latency issues. And this is something I'm gonna start showing in my projector videos. So you can see for yourself how it performs on a gaming level. Now the built-in speakers were very good. I enjoyed the sounds. I didn't need to connect any external source. Speakers were very good. So if we have a look at the top projector chart of 2021, you will see that I have ranked the Blitzwolf BWVP9 at position 10. Now this projector is being ranked lower than the VP6 only because of that color issue and lack of picture setting. If they got that right, this could have been one of the top five projectors of this year. So I hope this video helps you make that purchase decision. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, feel free to fire them at me in the comments below. Relevant links will be left in the description box as usual. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you all have a brilliant day. I'll see you all in the next one.